Well, hello. Welcome back to part two of the little Parkside um, petrol multi tool, the PBK 4B3. Right, so a couple of points. Firstly, um, that I, I've got through reading the manual, and we're just going to chuck on things like the uh, handle, the strimmer guard, the chain, and couple of and sorts like that see where you need might need to lubricate it at some point so let's start with the engine something in the manual that's quite interesting so that's the clippy bit for hooking on hooks onto any of these points here you can see push that in and, and you can obviously get it um, it will not actually drop uh, if you press that one in, uh, if you need to drop it in a hurry. But if you do need to drop it in a hurry, if you pull this up hard, that comes off. So that is useful to know. That's if you just need to drop it for some reason or other. Right, so that's that. Other thing, by the way, you're not supposed to start this thing, attach the harness. So start it on the ground. Don't kneel on it, put your foot on it or anything like that. Apparently it'll all be upset. So let's start with handle. That goes on the left hand side. There is a hole in this rubber, which is also split. Take off this wing nut here. We have two options. I'm going for the farthest down the pole for the moment. If I decide to move it, I'll just move it. Undo this. Eventually it'll come off. That flips up, comes off, out with the rubber which has got one hole in it. So what we're going to do is, let me just see, now that hole, right. So that's the way round it will go. That being wants to be furthest away in order that that then goes on the left hand side which manual says he wants to do. So we're just going to chuck that on there, like this, slide it up until it's over the forward hole, that will do. We can then push that over there, little locator there. Pull it round there like that clips under there, like that, wing nut, and that's done up, but obviously that rubber there provides you with a bit of anti-vibration, and that's good to go. Right, next thing which I will demonstrate with the, um, that's a little bit awkward, hold on, give me two seconds, let me just grab something to put over here. Stand it on, it's quite a long device. I'm going to use the extension pole. Right, so if you observe, Oops, there's a hole in there, there's a bung that comes in there, and there's that there. Start with that loose, take whatever tool it is, pull that off, and the spline shaft will be inclined to drop out. There's a female in there. See if I can. Actually, I'll tell you what I'll do. Just tip the camera down so you can see what I'm doing. Right, move that out of the way again. Right, spine shaft. That's going to drop out. I want to marry those splines up in there. Right, 
think the full set should. There we go. Slide down. You can just about see that. And that wants to line up with that hole. Push, click. Obviously, that can move about still. You do that up until it can't. Right. I will put that aside for now. I don't need to worry about that for the moment. Right. Next. Manual helpfully says, don't try to use this like this. Um, things will break. Your hedge trimmer attachment will go from Well, it won't quite do that because that's not the right place but in practice it will go from there to straight next important thing is they say check the grease every 20 hours of use that's of the particular tool that's a grease point for this you take that off and you'd use a grease gun, something like this, filled with a lithium based grease to squirt a little bit of grease in there. It's not desperately clear how much you should put in there, but there you go. So. And on this, Right, important things, starting with, let's go with the fitment of, um, so clockwise to undo because it's a left handed thread. So if you want to fit the brush cutter, off comes the nut, off comes the cover, off comes this piece, brush cutter goes on there. Actually, hold on. Let me just see now. I'll tell you what, before I fit and show you that, I am actually going to very quickly put the cover on. That's quite straightforward. You can only go on one way. Those two just go through that hole like that. There we go. Nice little lump of steel underneath, and that's five mil. It's managed to spill all everywhere. Right, where did I put the five mil Allen key? Had it a minute ago. The clubs. Right, not important. Work around it being dropped for the moment. Not convinced that one's through. Let's give it a push. Do oh. you believe it? Put it back in the tool bag where it belongs. I'll just loosen this one off a little.
Right, grease points there by the way, same thing as the other unit. Helpfully, on this side, it's got the direction of rotation, which is that way. So when you put on a blade, it wants to rotate the same way, and you can see it's marked on there the way it wants to rotate. Let me just whip that off. So, I'm going to take that off, that off, that off, with just this one on. This is the one with the cutout, jam it, go to the splines, that then goes on. Oh, hold on, right. So, the direction of rotation. is from the underside that way, there we go, so it would turn, there we go, exactly that way, right, okay. So it will turn this way, which you can see is marked just there, Turning that way, hey, isn't it turning? What is that? Turning clockwise, right? So, hold on. So blades, there they are, right? So blades want to be exactly that way around. Then you put that on. Slides over the top, that nut cover on, on it goes, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Do that, make sure it's tight, for which you'll need to engage an Allen key in there. Right, next thing, take those two off. If you are going to go and fit strim ahead, you just have that one on, nothing else, and that screws on nice and easy, remembering it's a left hand thread. And then if you want to go and get some more thread out, throttle up. Bang that on the ground, some thread will come out. Right. So, let me put that back on. That back on. That back on. Okay, one last thing on the strimmer before we move on to putting the chain on. Right, in order to change the filament, you can press that one and that one together, then pull that out, you can then see that you can pull that out of there. Out of there. This is really easy, and that's the spool it goes on. That, that I like that. That's just outrageously easy to change. And to put it back on, simply line up those two like that. So you can see there. That's the only way it can go on. Hold on. There we go. And push together. And it's done. That, that I like a lot. Anyway, right, that's those chains. Right. 
comes the chainsaw. Okay, firstly, chain. Chains only cut one way, and the way they cut is that's cutting edge, it needs to be going that way. That there, the height of that covers the depth of cut. As this sharpens, the height of the cut off the chain goes back, and you might need to fettle that slightly. Okay, but that's basically the chain needs to go this way uh, in order to cut. And then on the underside of the chain, it obviously comes back. So we just get that chain out. Chain down there. Where do I put the pole saw? Right. And there is again your pole saw grease point. If you're adjusting the oil flow for the automatic oiler, that's that screw there. As I said yesterday, that's a screw for adjusting tension. Right, uh, and when you're cutting, you just need to be able to see somewhere where you can see a little bit of oil spray, like a piece of paper or something. Rev it up, you should just see a very fine trail of oil. You don't want too much oil, but if you haven't got any oil coming out, you need to make sure that you've got some coming out. Either adjust the oil flow or check the ports. Right. So let's go and stuff the chain on. So undo the nut. Nut down. Right, okay. So what we're going to do. That's going to go on that way, so let's start by. There's a little sprocket at the front of this, by the way, and you can drop a little bit of oil in there uh, on either side to lubricate that, which I will do. And you might want to do every time you use it. So you need to make sure these go in the guides incidentally I, not a bad idea to wear gloves doing this particular operation right so cutting edge will go forward over the top and back under and you can see there it marks the direction of the saw chain so then going to go and slide that hold on just see that into the sprocket. Hold on. There we go. I'm doing what would loosen the chain. Right, there we go. So, just let me take that off again to show you. That's quite stiff on there. Once you get it on, why is that not? Should be able to actually let me just loosen it off. That's as far as it goes. Right.
key points I forgot to mention. You see there, there is a ridge in the middle. That is a slot. That slot goes over that ridge. It stops the blade doing that. That is the um, tensioner and that is the oil hull. When you're swapping, changing the, changing the bar over, which you want to turn it over every time you sharp the blade, the chain, you want to make sure that port's clear. Right, so let's go and put that back on. Ensuring that the chain's going that way. Which it is. Right. Ensuring also the chain is nicely sat in the groove. Okay, now it's located there, that's all located nicely, we can put this back on, okay. now at this stage don't do it up too tight because we need to adjust the chain, you can see that's very very floppy, that's no good. So this one does up clockwise to tighten the chain. And you want about a couple of millimetres of drop, that's too much. In the middle, right, so if I pull that down, that is near a 4mm, so we want it a bit tighter. And stay tight still. That will do. Right, so that's a chain fitted. One thing to note, now the chain's on and tensioned, don't forget to tighten it up. Right, that bit's done. During use, let me just make sure that's no, that's fine. Just making sure that that's still a reasonable, not too tight. During use, the chain will warm up. It will get slacker. After about ten minutes, you should just double check that it's not too slack, and go through the tightening procedure. Obviously, with the engine off. Right. One last thing safety procedure that uh, the manual draws to your attention. Oh, it's too long. Whenever you're adjusting things like the, uh, just drag that down, whenever you're adjusting the fittings on the end of this, they say you should pull off spark plug cover. I find that quite hard work initially. You might like to try just. I tell you what, that is desperately tight. That is. Let me see if I can figure out an easy way of getting that off. It made this spark plug thing just that little bit too tight. Come on. Where's my? In there. It's my channel locks when I want them. There's a pair of channel locks. Oh, that's
you want. I haven't had that really hard work, that particular job. Hmm. I shall figure that out for the next time I do a video. I think it's going to involve getting a screwdriver in there and prying it off. Actually, let me see. Oh, okay, that doesn't look particularly difficult. There we go, that's it. Right. And in there, we have the spark plug, which looks an awful lot like a torch spark plug, which we all know is Mixmower's favourite spark plug. Right, push that on. Apparently they want to do that every time you're fiddling with the other end of this. I'm not entirely convinced it's necessary every time. Oh, and let me just quickly rip that off and show you one other thing very quickly. Give me two secs. Just press that button there. Pull out your bit. Work. Really can come out quite a long way. That's a pain in the head. neck. Right. Cover on that end. Right. I'm missing a cover for that. Right, we'll come back to that. Right, one last thing. Air filter is in there. Oh, by the way, before we do that, choke there. That's choke on. Choke off, you put the choke on, you then rev it, it'll turn the choke off. Right, let's quickly grab that out, undo that. Eventually it'll come off. Right. Air filter element needs a clean once in a while. So it back in there when you've done that. Right. Hooks over there to that spot there. Put that over like that. Hold on. There we go. Fill around with that a little bit. Nice. Missed. Right. Filter in there. Ah, oh, right, okay. Push that down like that. And hopefully, yeah, that feels better. Right. <clears throat> Next video we'll be using it. Thank you for watching. Please like, please share, please subscribe. And of course, obviously, if 
you subscribe, you'll definitely catch the next one that comes out, which should be the day after this one.